Hello and welcome back to Valiant Hearts, The Great War. This will be episode 2 of our, honestly, probably going to be a really short series, but I hope you enjoy. Let's go. Her name was Anna, a Belgian student living in Paris. She was hard on the trail of her missing father. For once, fate smiled on them. They were all going in the same direction. But while approaching Vimy, a German squadron spotted them. All right. Almost. And if you didn't notice, the music is playing along to the gunshots and bombs being dropped. We got, we got Anna, Walt, Emil, and Freddy. Landmines. And now we are in a German trench. <laughs> now, if I were to go up, they'd shoot me, but they don't shoot him because, well, it's it's one of their dogs. And since it's a trench, they probably have plenty, I would assume. I don't ask why they don't freak out whenever they hear that kaboom. Wild. Alright, perfect time to go, perfect time to go. Do we have any- oh yeah, we have more. <clears throat> the trenches. Between the sides, there was an imbalance in trench conditions. After securing a head start in trench construction, the Germans reinforced them with iron and, con and concrete. While the Allies had to wallow in mud, the Allies' change over policy may be contributed to this. Allied soldiers had seven-day shifts on the front, whereas German soldiers were allocated to a specific zone for an intermediate period, giving them a chance to settle in. The Labyrinth. Find me an... an Saint-Vast were two positions the Germans were quick to fortify. Here, they built the Labyrinth, a complex network of trenches and tunnels connected to underground sleeping quarters. Allied armies unsuccessfully attempted to seize this key position on numerous occasions due to the huge number of casualties. In late 1915, the position was declared impregnable. <laughs> Memorial to the Moroccan Division Moroccan division, whose motto was No Fear, No Mercy, combined soldiers from across French colonial Africa and the Foreign Legion. The division included Moroccan Suaves and Tunisian and Algerian infantrymen. <gasps> Algeria! You, got, you, you, you guys remember Algeria from, uh, 
1915, the division seized Vimy Ridge, but in the absence of backup from Battalion HQ, they were forced to retreat after two days. The Moroccan division is the only division whose flags were decorated with the Legion of Honor. <laughs> Naval cannons. Naval cannons were capable of firing heavy-duty 800-pound shells. Due to their weight, they were mounted on special rails for transport to firing platforms. In the event of a retreat, artillerymen were instructed to destroy the cannons rather than let them fall into enemy hands. <laughs> We have a lot to find. Do we have any diaries? No. <laughs> Vault. Wait, are they coming? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Hey, Wolf, I'm gonna need that uh, wire cutter. Walt! Oh, that's the first collectible. What is this? Periscope. To observe enemy trenches without drawing fire, officers and soldiers used periscopes. Mirrors mounted in a tube that could be raised above the parapet with no risk to health. Look at all these German men. Anything else over here? No, just a collectible. Walt's just chilling, bro. Walter. Don't forget the water bottle, Walter. Oh, we need, um, bro for that. I'm not gonna try and leave other right here. Walter. Walter. Get the bomb, Walter! I need help, I know what I'm doing. They just fall into the void. Oh wait, that's right. Like the man and I, uh, the wire cutters. They brought. <laughs> Infantryman, infantryman's flask. Soldiers frequently suffered from thirst, and water supplies were far from regular. All soldiers had canteens in which they transported water and also wine. Some also had flasks or goat skins, which were less heavy to carry. <laughs> just so you know, I'm finding these all from memory. It's not like I have a thing just to find it. Ooh, look, it's the Zeppelin in the background. Oh my god! Go, 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 because they are really fast. Next thing I'm looking for is like a thingy. Uh, that is a Harlem Hellfighter, I think. I know it's from Battlefield 1.
vial of nephrosynthanine. To combat problems of morale and physical fitness, army doctors sometimes distributed that word, injections, a, a, com a composite of magnesium and potassium tend to give weary soldiers a hearty boost. Ah, man. I'm trying to get episode one posted, but it's just being such a bother for some reason. Hello. Bro, are you good? What's that? Ooh, bomb. Hey, well, I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna send him down the bomb. Yeah, we set it there. Yeah. What's the reason for you to go in here? What? What? <laughs> what? 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 I think if you look very closely, you can see the detail difference in the house when he goes down. If there even is any, I'm not sure. What's the point of sending him out to the line? But surely this would alert everyone within a square mile, right? I am missing something, so it's not letting me interact. What am I missing? Walt. Walter. What? What? Oh, right there. All right, Walt. Walt. Hey, what? I love this dog, man. Not honestly killed with this dog, and it's not even real. Let me pet little dude. Fine, never mind. No oh, smoke screen, so they can't see me. I still feel like they would like come and investigate like immediately, like like that guy in the background should hop up and jump. Like, whoa, what was that? There's a ping. Dog. Dog. I thought that the, oh my god, so that, that's some um, a bunch of corpses out there. French and uh, you know. Yikes. We dig. This looks suspicious. Walter. That's what I was thing I have to find. Looks like a uh, paper. Where's Walter? Where is he? Oh, I can't hit him. Oh, there we go. I'd be getting them down from over there. Let's pull you back because you don't seem like you're much use to anything. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, I need to get over there. It's up here. Oh, uh, wine. I'm spamming button in case there's anything here. Pull dispenser here. Um, I'll be right back. I use the bathroom. Oh boy! All right, I am back. I return. Hi! Oh yeah! Ooh! I missed something. T 
10 of sardines. Soldiers were all fed by their respective back home to improve their daily life. Tins of fish or eight give them a more copious nutritional meal than their daily far army fare. Where did I miss a thingy? Would it be up by Walt? No, because... Where would I have missed a paper? That's what that looks like. It's a paper. Huh. I'm trying to think where I could have missed a paper. <laughs> British coins. When the war raged on, life continued in the economy too. The war economy was composed of both barter and currency systems. Soldiers purchased provisions in towns using their pay in 1914. Yeah, blah blah blah. So, where did I miss a parcel? Or a paper? Where, where, where did I miss what? I must have missed it back on the surface somewhere. That is the only explanation for why I can't seem to find it. I'm gonna think, so, because I found this up there. Uh... Just hear me out, guys. Hear me out. Would it not. My controller would not fumble like that. Would it not make sense for. Uh. What's it call it? For the stuff like three last things to be down here, right? Oh my stomach! <laughs> Ooh, let me just settle. I'll be right back. Okay, I admit I might have cheated a little bit, but I was correct. It's right over here somewhere. I admit I cheated, but yeah, right here. Wow, I, that blended really nice. Letter from a German soldier, 21st of April, 1915. Dear Andrea, we've been stuck down here, down this hole since January, and I can't stand it anymore. I'm sick to the back teeth with living like a rat. I really miss being beneath the linden trees with you. I even miss working in the factory. All my love, or Dieter. Dieter? Dieter? I don't know. Yeah, I found all the stuff because I'm petty and I didn't want to miss anything. Excuse me? Bro did not want to lose a collectible. Smart. And brother, I hurt people. Oh, 
I'll go. <laughs> Come on, Walter. Thank you, Walt. Big, strong old man with like meaty man arms, bro. This guy could like actually like walk you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This man can walk you? Let's make sure that was in the wall. Freedom! Okay, fine, I'll hit the tower. Or the house. Baron von Dorf had escaped again. But Emil had still managed to find medicine for Freddy. Thank you, my friend. They were quickly back on the road again. Their journey would take them to Rans where they would at last pick up the trail of the elusive Baron and his Zeppelin. Okay, boot. All right. Rhymes Cathedral. The city of Rhymes suffered during the war. September 19th, 1914, as the Germans retreated. The city was so close to the conflict zone, it was bombarded by zeppelins and cannon fire. During the bombardments, the statue of Joan of Arc in front of the cathedral lost a hand before it was dismantled, dismantled and stored in the catacomb. By the end of the war, only 1,500 inhabitants were still living in Rhymes. Christ. The home front. With practically all able-bodied men mobilized at the front, women, children, and the elderly were employed in factories to ensure weapons production. Women took on traditional male jobs, some even held positions of responsibility. This new role changed the their status in society, and in its wake of the war, women over 30 years old were given the vote. The Women's in Institute held its first meeting in 1915 with the aim of encouraging women to become more involved in food production during the war, and the movement flourished. Any new diaries? Yes. <clears throat> April 22nd, 1915. Carl is alive. I caught sight of him flying a Zeppelin heading south. We're going looking for him again tomorrow with Anna and Freddy. April 22nd, 1915. This morning in the freeze, von Dorf made us capture some scientists. The army is interested in his work and apparently he'll help Germany win the war. He seems like a nice fellow, but it's hard to find out anything else about him. Von Dorf is keeping him closely guarded. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my Marie and my little Victor. Seems for eight months now. I miss them so much. Collectibles? Uh, live. <laughs> June 1st, 1915, Rhine, France. Oh my god! What? This is kind of our stats they were talking about. Whoa! I'm spamming buttons in case there's any collectibles. <laughs> Freddy's gonna go box him, bro. I guess that leads to like the catacombs or something. You need your husband, you need a daughter. Get him, dog! Oh, 
got Anna being a doctor, bro. Oh, there's something there? What? Oh, huh? Advertising brochure. For the war raged on, life continued back home, and brands still advertised their products. Naturally, soldiers were, were used to promote brand image, image and boost sales. This brochure is advertising war bonds to help the government finance the war effort. Oh, but what the s- I'm not gonna say that out loud, that's so cringe. Walter. Walter. What are you doing here, Walter? See to play, see to play. Here, uh, you need to no dog. Here, you take this. I need to. Oh, what am I? It's so crazy. He's he's not, he's not, he sounds like the guy from. Uh, he means the bunker. It sounds so crazy. <laughs> Ooh, overalls. Overalls, practically all able to me. Yada yada yada. Some even mm -hmm. okay, cool. <laughs> Bro sounds sounds like me. <laughs> He's me for real. I'm playing him. He's the bunker again, brother. Just so y'all know, the next amnesia game is probably gonna take place during World War II. Just remember that. cabinets too. Oh, there's the thing. Safety razor. The safety razor was an early 20th century invention and shaved more safely than barber blades. In 1917, safety razors were standard issue in U.S. soldiers' kit because it had noticed that the gas masks provided more effective protection to shaved faces. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> How do you get down? Uh, you go pull thing. You push it again. You go to thingy. And I lower you down. That's better. Wow, we've already found like <laughs> three collectibles. No, well, come on, mother. Let's go, Walter. He's whimpering, I must pet him. Get the girl out of here. Oh, you're just dying over there. <laughs> Ooh, thingy. Early gas mask. While gas masks were more widespread use on the front, they were also available to civilians and in French towns close to the front, like Rhymes. They were fairly common. This early model was one of the first composed of a cotton compressed douse in a neutralizing solution and applied to the mouth and nose, similar to the British Black Veil. I don't know what that is, but I'm mildly curious. Blah. Yes, you 
Am I missing something? Yeah, go get the work, old man. Get the work! I wasn't a fan to the floor. Because I'm missing... I missed something. Oh, baby. Oh, and I found my collectible right there, too. Yes! War Godmother Certificate. To improve morale in the front, an association was created in France in early 1915 to provide secure and support from behind the lines for soldiers without close families. The War Godmothers sent letters and parcels forming close relations to their godchildren away from the front. Bro, I got a nice grandma sending me letters with cookies. Bro, I won't die. Like, honestly, you can't kill me now. You kill me, I'm gonna haunt you. Th them's just the rules. Then where would you be? Bush! Get to the cathedral! Oh, there it is right there, shining. I saw it. Active service paybook. A paybook belonging to a British soldier. It also contained practical details such as a last will and testament form, as well as the name and addresses of close relatives to contact in the event of death. The book also served as a regulation guide, regulations guide to good temptation, no, good contact of any men. In this new experience, you may find temptations both in wine and wine, and you must try to resist both. So basically, don't sleep around, don't get drunk. That's everything. John the Ark. Walt, I can run! <coughs> Pretty screaming. It's good. Falta. 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 Salta! Salta White! Baron Von Dorf. Oh. Uh oh. Salta White. Salta! I got him! Oh wow, I'm actually doing really good at this. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay attention to what does what. You're the, you're the, I guess you're the long one. Get back in there! This dude, absolute garbage. Garbo. Absolute dog. Freddy! Yeah, pretty fast bear. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stink him. Fight me. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, I have to. Yeah, right in there. Yeah. I remember. I remember now. Grab the grenade. This easy? Oh, what? But I destroyed the engine. Why are you still flying? Oh my god! Oh my. For an old man, you got an arm. <laughs> Baron Von Dorf got an arm, bro. <laughs>
fan of a dwarf got an arm. <laughs> Okay, that's a grenade in there. I'll give you the two piece, bro. If I even give you a four piece combo with some fries on the side. Hey, <laughs> brother, you're cooked. You're done. You're done! <laughs> Carl! Carl! No, actually, fun, uh, fun thing. If any of y'all can read what it's saying on his uh, ship, like, you know, the flag, if that's even, you know, written out to be anything, I want to know what it says, personally. Anna was training to be a veterinarian when the war broke out. The Germans were only 20 miles from Paris when she received a letter from her father. He was in good health, but implored her not to return home to Belgium until the war's end. Patience, however, was not one of Anna's strong suits. September 6, 1914, Paris, France. Now playing as Anna, the doctor. Ooh, I see. Book. No, not a book. What is that? The Germans at the gate. In September 14... And... Yeah, In September 19, the German advance took them to within 20 miles of Paris. Or whatever. And was expecting par Paris to fall. In the north, most of Belgium was occupied... But under the king's commands, 75,000 soldiers kept your freeze and your seer out of German hands. Taxi to Marne. September 6th and 7th, 1914, General Galileani requisitioned 630 Parisian... <gasps> Whoa, excuse me. Taxis to transport troops rapidly to the Marne. While relatively few soldiers were actually transported, 4,000 in all, 3% of the total number of men deployed in the battle... The, port, the impact of the public on the public was huge. The event became a symbol of sol solidarity for the nation and the Marne counterattack saved Paris from German occupation. I'm having very unholy thoughts right now. I'm not going to say them out loud, though. <laughs> Nothing. I, I was just thinking about it for a second. Okay, so first of all, um, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. Well, I did, but not right now. Why well, is he starting to a bird? <laughs> God! Ma, oh, I need a key. Thingy? What are you? Inkwell. Ballpoint pens were not developed until the 1950s and 60s, so soldiers used a quill or a nib to write letters. Ink was poured into an inkwell, which, in, into which, in order, to provide enough ink. Will the nib had to be dipped regularly? Oh, okay. So Anna's dad is the scientist dude that Baron von Dorf has. Of course, she's like rigid hell, bro. The communist would not like her. Yes. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> Letter from a Belgian civilian in Paris. Dear parents, we fled our land before the German advance to take shelter in France with the children. Unfortunately, the Germans are under siege. If Paris falls, we shall return home to Liege. Your dear daughter, Mathia. Ma that word, big long name. 
Taxis to the Marne. Parisian taxis are requisitioned. <laughs> Look at this album cover photo, bro. There's the watch. Is it a watch? Broken watch strap. A watch strap broken by a motor crank handle. Before battery ignition was developed, motor cars were started by cranking a handle. As the engine sparked into life, the operator had to let let go of the handle smartly because the crank handle now propelled by the engine could cause a nasty accident. Imagine getting outed by your own car. Ah, itchy nose. We need a... Hey! I need a taxi! Ooh, the paper! Newspapers. The main source of information was the newspaper. Radios were not in their radios were in their early days based on the two on tube technology and television did not exist. On top of local and national news, a news section appeared in the newspapers dedicated to the events of the front. Some newspapers also published daily listings of POWs in war dead. Have I seen anywhere that needs an X? Water. Where do we get water from? Ooh, here. Uh, where do we get a cup? Doctor! Doctor! <laughs> Let me show where all my buttons are. Place the bottle? Are you serious? Why? Just carry them both. You have a, you have a whole bag. <laughs> Bitty Bobby Baggins, bro. <laughs> yeah, to be clear, that's where we're that's where, that's where we're supposed to use the uh, thing because you know. Spibbity. I really like this art style. I wish they would make a second game. That would be so awesome. A second Valiant Hearts game? Like, come on, that would be dope. That would be, like, actually insane. That would be dope. That would be awesome. I, I would I would pay my entire life savings, for real. Before we would do that, let's turn off the water. We're wasting it. Unless it's just gone. Never mind. The, the wrench is gone. We're wasting all your water. Scammer! <laughs> oh dear. I have soldiers on board. Please get away from my car. <laughs> uh. Bro! They're trying to touch me! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ah! 
Oh my god. How am I dodging all of this? I don't know. How am I dodging all of this? Ah! W! September 7th, 1914. Taxis drove all night. Anna was proud to help the soldiers reach the front line. When Anna arrived at her destination, she discovered the horrible truth with her own eyes. This is where a civilian learns that the front is actually hell. Like, actually insane. <laughs> actually not cracked the hecatomb the first three months of the war saw especially heavy losses august 22nd 1914 was the bloodiest day in the whole war with heavy casualties the numbers of wounded were far greater than had been than had been anticipated the military health services struggled to cope with the scale of the conflict nurses Nurses were the angels of the Great War and were generally volunteers recruited by the Red Cross, the Army, or the American ambulances to work long, going shifts in hospitals, both at the front and behind the lines. They played the role of carers, mothers, confidants. They often featured in soldiers' memoirs and were sometimes their sole companion in death. The majority were demobilized at the end of the hostilities. Can you imagine being the final thing to keep a man, like, to give a man company, or, like, anything in general company before they die, like, bro, actual trauma, like. Doctor time. <laughs> Medical aid. Pop your bones, brother. Oh my god, if I, if I can beat this entire game without fumbling a medical segment, that'll be insane, because it's the last achievement I need. <laughs> Seven months went by. Driven by compassion, Anna devoted herself, body and soul, to healing the wounded and the sick. Every life saved was another small victory over the war. The conflict, however, raged on. Ooh, um, thingy. I missed two whole things! No! <laughs> Shrapnel shell remnants. Shrapnel shell remnants are shell containing lead bullets. Depending on its setting, the shell might explode on contact with the ground, sending its contents flying or in the air for even more destructive results. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed two things. Yep. Gotta do it shell shock, clearly. The situation is horrific here. Yesterday I was in my warm, cozy apartment, and now I'm in the depths of hell. There are so many dead, so many young lives lost. I managed to save one soldier this morning, but there are so many others to tend to. Tomorrow I'll try to get closer to the front so I can help those most in need. Oh, hello. Oh, hello? What is this? Oh, I didn't miss anything. Oh my god! <laughs> Nurse's manual. The war effort suddenly required a larger medical corps, and there were not enough qualified personnel. So the manuals were published and distrib distributed to help volunteers train. The manuals provided a whole host of practical solutions to, to logistical and med 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 medical problems at the front, such as how to make a splinter, or well, splint, or stretcher using rifles and their straps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Need water, Walter. Hey, 
Oh, oh brother, I'm gonna make you hate your life. I'm gonna chloroform you. What did I cut off your arm? Because you have your leg, so it's your arm. She bob a bit. Oh, he's just the tree, right? Ooh, socks. Right? Tallow socks. Socks soaked in refined tallow and coated with formal. The most effective way to beat the cold and damp, frostbite, and other ailments. That, at least, was what the adverts people believe. However affected the socks were, the soldier's best friend was always a nice dry pair. Dude, you have shell shock need to sit down. Oh wait, now you're thirsty and you're just bumbling around. I have a scarf. Darf. Ha. Huh. I'll help you in a minute, bro. Yeah, I know, you need water. Ooh, hey. What are you? Mess tin with holes. Both dishes of this mess tin have holes in them. Not hugely practical for eating, perhaps, but life-saving for one soldier. The mess tin was worn at kidney height, and when the shell exploded, the mess tin slowed down the searing hot shrapnel in flight, which, although it wounded the soldier, helped him live another day. Mess tins were black and using smoke to prevent them glinting in the sunlight. Christ. I'm dying over here. I'm dying, sister. Bro, if you need a splint... Okay, yeah, so you're the walking guy who, like, I finally, like, actually sat down and chilled out. Just hear me out, the, like, walking stick she has. Just hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. Okay, let's give bros water. You, you need your tippy cup? There's your tippy cup. <laughs> the cross. No, not yet. We're looking for loot. Oh, the comb. Lice comb. Oh, in their journals, soldiers often recount their losing war against lice and rats in the trenches. Apart from lice powder, the only other prevention against lice was a fine tooth metal comb. Often when soldiers took leave behind the lines. They were scrubbed down with hot water, their clothing boiled, or a new uniform issued. I'm gonna boil my uniform. I, that sounds really bad. Honestly, sounds like it'd be dope. A boiled uniform, bro. <laughs> How do I help you, bro? You're just stuck there. What do you need? Oh, I can help you? Okay. Scarf? Oh, yeah, because you're bleeding or something. Break your arm, brother! Oh, don't fumble. I'm gonna cry as I fumble. Oh, I, nah. I can't believe I fumbled! No! I can't get the achievement now, bro. Where do I get you? A paper. It's clearly not over here. I'm just gonna spam the grab button until I find something. Ooh, I'll use you for the thingy. There's the paper. Five minutes. 
Letter from a Prussian soldier. My dear daughter, we are making headway through the French countryside. The landscape is beautiful. I'd much rather be enjoying it with you than killing people. I think of you all the time. Your father, Wolfgang. Let's go help Crybaby over here. <laughs> with a broken leg. <laughs> Yeah, you can walk in. Ooh. Who else is screaming? I don't quite remember every part of this game, but who is screaming? Oh, so I was supposed to bring to your attention, like, look how many corpses are under this one bridge. Like, that is all corpses. officers were talking about Belgium. The German army was about to experiment with a new weapon near Ypres, Anna's hometown. Papa. Anna got en route to warn her father about the imminent danger. Reaching the outskirts of the city, Anna was greeted by the screams of sirens. The deadly gas was already here. As much as, as I would like to continue, that is all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed this second episode of, you know, Valiant Hearts, The Great War. I will see you probably tomorrow. Goodbye and enjoy your days.